Welcome back to chapter four. This is the fifth part, and we are finally done with naming and writing formulas for ionic compounds. And now we're going to write names from formulas and formulas from names of molecular compounds. Remember also another word for molecular is covalent. So these are the things that share electrons, okay? They don't transfer. And you're going to like these better because I think they're a lot easier. There's a lot fewer rules. And um, so um, when you do a covalent bond, you're bonding um, pairs of electrons together. So here's a bonding pair that you're sharing between the oxygen and the hydrogen and water. And then you have lone pairs, which are not bound to anything. So in this one, you have two bonding pairs and then you have two non-bonding pairs. And so we also call those lone pairs or non-bonding pairs. And so the electrons that are shared are called bonding pairs. When the two atoms share one pair of electrons, that is a single covalent bond. And it, you'll see us do a dash. So like, like we'll do um, something like this and then draw those electrons in that are lone pairs. And so this dash equals two electrons, okay? So we're just doing a dash because you know chemists are lazy. So anything we can do to keep from writing something extra, right? Notice that most elements are gonna want an octet. That is, they want eight. But hydrogen and a few others only want a duet. So um, when you're putting them together, that's what you always try to achieve. And so oxygen thinks that it has eight because there are eight surrounding it, whereas each hydrogen thinks it has its duet, it's two. So everybody's happy and everybody has a filled shell. You can also share more than one bond, you can do what's called a double covalent bond. And in that case, you're actually sharing four electrons between the two. And I have a little anagram for this called pecans. So the only things that can double bond are called pecans. Phosphorus, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So it just stands for the first letter of each of those. So with pecans, you can double bond. If it's not between these, then you can't double bond them. You can even have triple bonds. And triple bonds is where you share three pairs of electrons. So you're actually sharing six electrons. And even fewer elements can do that. They're just cons carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So pecans can do a double bond, but cons can do triple bonds. So Lewis theory um, tells us that some combinations should be stable where others are not. And we know that those stable combinations in most elements are what why they form the octet because they have a full outer shell and this allows us to predict the formulas of the molecules also in these covalently bonded substances. So the formula for a molecular compound cannot be readily determined from its elements because the same combination of those elements could have different molecular compounds. So remember it when we were talking about empirical formula versus molecular formula, things can have the same empirical formula, but different molecular formulas. And even between nitrogen and oxygen, you can have lots of different combinations in covalent compounds because they're not they're not um, completely um, just using charges, okay? These covalents, they're not doing this because they're sharing. Now, we can often come up with a formula this using this, but that's not what's going on here. They're literally sharing those electrons. So 
the main thing that we remember difference between ionic compounds and, mo and molecular or covalent compounds is that the molecular compounds are made of two non-metals or more, okay? Ionic compounds were a metal and a non-metal. So you look to see if there's a metal in the formula. If there's a metal in the formula, it's got to be ionic. If there are no metals in the formula, then it's going to be molecular. So when we name molecular compounds, you write the name of the element with the smallest group first. If the two elements are in the same group, then you write the element with the greatest row number first. And then the prefixes are given to each element depending on how many you've got. Okay, and that sounds all crazy, but it's really not. Okay, so um, these prefixes are the exact same ones that we used in the hydrates. So you don't have to learn them once. So we're going to be using prefixes to tell us how many of each atom or element is in the formula. And the one caveat to this is that if if there's only one in the first element that you're writing in the formula, you do not have to use mono. It's understood that if you don't have anything, that it's mono. Now, if it's in the formula, the second part of it, you do have to write the mono. All right, so I've got Ni3. Now, we're going to call these ides, just like we did with the ionic, okay? But I'm going to have nitrogen. Now, first, I'm going to look at this, okay? That does not have any metals in it. This is two nonmetals, nitrogen and iodine. And you can tell that by looking, and they're to the right of the zigzag line on the periodic table. So I know I've got nitrogen, and I know that it's going to be iodide. Because if it's binary, it's going to end in IDE, just like we saw in ionic compounds. But the only difference is I have to use one of those um, prefixes to tell me how many iodides I have. So I have three, and so this one's going to look really crazy, triiodide. Nitrogen triiodide. Because it's a binary compound, it's just two types of things. It doesn't have any O's. Okay, so it's IDE. Notice I didn't say mono nitrogen because I don't have to put the mono if it's the beginning one. It's only the second one that I have to have to do that with. All right, the second B is PCl5. So I'm going to write phosphorus, the name of the first one. And then chlorine becomes chloride, just like in the ionic compounds. And then I need to know what the prefix for 5 is, and it's penta. So it's phosphorus pentachloride. The last one on here is P4S. 10. Now this one has got more than one on that first one, so I do have to tell what it is. But I still just write the base for them. So I'm just going to leave myself some room here, and I'm going to write phosphorus. And then it's going to be sulfur becomes sulfide. And then I'm just leaving myself some room for the prefix. So look back and you will see that the prefix for four is tetra, not quatra, okay, tetraphosphorus deca sulfide. And, that, and this is like one word and that is one word, okay. Tetraphosphorus deca sulfide. As long as you know the prefixes, you won't have any trouble with these. Okay, so you're going to name this compound, which you should be able to do. And then you're going to go back the other way and write the formula, which is even easier, phosphorus tribromide. So that's a P, B, R, and tri is three. Done. And that's it for naming and writing the formulas for molecular compounds.